Yes, I also played the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League closed alpha that we first could not talk about, but the NDA has lifted, so I can share my experience playing a few hours of this game and I have some thoughts. In short, I'm kind of conflicted. I really love things I did not think I would like, but I'm also not convinced that all the many gameplay systems will work well together to make a title that will be fun to play for a long time. So far though, it does seem that at least going through the campaign will have a ton of great moments, and that's mostly thanks to the really well done cutscenes. Seeing the conversations between the Suicide Squad members in the trailers and the recent insider videos just did not do it for me, like the jokes did not land, the characters overall just felt pretty annoying and it did not come close to some of the James Gunn Suicide Squad movie counterparts. But this completely changed for me when I actually got to sit down and play the closed alpha. The game starts a week before the actual starting point of the story. I sadly cannot share my gameplay from my play session but you basically have to do a tutorial first where you control each character with their traversal equipment to see who you might like while also learning the basics of the game. But in this tutorial you will also already hear a lot of banter between the Suicide Squad members. They're making jokes about if Harley is talking to dead enemies and pretending they are puppets again, which he totally does. How Deadshot never took a vacation that wasn't work and Captain Boomerang pretends to be fighting a lot of Brainiac's enemies so while everyone on the team could clearly tell that he was lying. The personalities of each character just immediately shine through and I really enjoyed getting a glimpse of what the Suicide Squad team will be like when they get to know each other a bit better later on in the game. It also really set the tone. These characters don't take anything seriously, don't think before they say something which especially made later cutscenes super enjoyable. After the tutorial we go to 7 days earlier when all the criminals are still in Gotham and get recruited by Amanda Waller to form the Suicide Squad. But it especially gets good when they get to interact with the Justice League members. A corrupted Green Lantern welcomes us when we reach Metropolis for the first time. It really works because just like Harley, Deadshot, Captain Boomerang and King Shark, we as the player also don't really know what What's going on. But we now quickly see that Green Lantern enjoys turning the remaining citizens of Metropolis he was first protecting into ugly Brainiac soldiers. This would be our fate as well but luckily the Flash shows up to confront Green Lantern because the Flash has not been taken over by Brainiac yet and now sometimes during missions while being able to freely move in the open world you would see the two battle each other which was just really cool to see. But also the introduction to Wonder Woman and Batman in these opening hours are really well done, especially thanks to the incompetent Suicide Squad. Like they can't work together yet and have to get used to their new tech and this puts a brilliant spotlight on how powerful these Justice League members are and how your goal to kill them seems completely irrational. It made me really invested in their journey, like how are they going to manage, not to mention the fact that the Suicide Squad members are also plotting against Amanda Waller to try and get the bomb in their head removed and escape Metropolis once and for all. Now the question really is if the gameplay will be fun enough to take us through the already intriguing story because the moment I was not on my way to a new set piece or big story moment it just did not click for me yet. Of course I only played a few hours but usually the gameplay hooks in loot driven games immediately become clear like it feels good to kill your first enemies and pick up your first equipment in Diablo or find a powerful new gun in Borderlands or even when I started flying for the first time in Anthem, I was like, wow, this is awesome. But I did not have that feeling in Suicide Squad, and that could either be because the special sauce is simply not there, or it just takes a pretty long time to master all the different systems. Traversal in particular is really important, not only to go through the open world, but also to reach the enemies in combat that are all shooting at you from different rooftops. And how each character moves through the world is also what really sets them apart, but swinging around as Harley with the bad drone and grappling to different buildings to get momentum while also shooting and focusing on enemies, it was all pretty hard to get under control. And this next to a system that this game took straight out of Doom, like you have a shield and you have to recharge that by shooting the legs of an enemy and then performing a melee attack. There are also enemies that can only be hit by melee attacks before you can deal damage to them, so you have to get close first. There's also this indicator and then it means that the enemy is performing a special attack 
so you have to do a counter shot to block them. When you reload, you have to time it right, Battlefront style, to instantly reload the weapon. There are also special combat flare challenges that give you more rewards if you, for example, kill enemies with certain weapons or reach a certain combo. Like, there was a ton going on. I would argue a bit too much for the opening hours, but maybe it becomes more satisfying when you master your character's traversal, learn how to counter each enemy. It's kind of hard to tell at this point. I just right now worry that having all these systems does not work well together with the RPG side of this game. Like every small activity I did gave me some piece of random loot, but even though the legendary pistol I got for Harley had way better damage, using the weaker SMG was still better because ammo does not seem to be an issue, so I could just easily spray to hit an enemy which also made it way easier to hit the legs to get shield back. Rocksteady really wants us to make cool builds during the end game with special weapon and gear perks and even set bonuses. But I wonder if you really get to enjoy your build that much because you also have to worry about getting in range to get shield back or meleeing an enemy first before you can even do damage. That's why I can see Deadshot for example being way more powerful than Captain Boomerang because Deadshot can just hover in the air and easily pick up enemies one by one while Boomer has to focus on running up buildings and moving from one rooftop to the other before he can even make a kill. That's why when I switched from Harley to King Shark I also had a way better experience. Like your traversal is just a forward and vertical jump so you land and stay on the ground very often which meant that I could like just focus on dealing damage to enemies instead of having to chase them all the time. So my prediction is that King Shark and Deadshot will be the most powerful characters because their traversal is just way more convenient. Although of course that could also change if you play more of the game but right now though the gameplay just did not convince me yet. And another big reason for that are the very uninspired open world activities. So, like you go from the really big highs with the highlight totally being a kind of horror or Batman encounter in a museum that I won't spoil and after that you're shooting waves of enemies while protecting or destroying a certain object. At one point in the alpha I had to pick out of three activities and really got flashbacks to Avengers and other life surface games. Like high chance we'll have to grind some of these endless objectives in order to advance the story or get good enough loot to be able to beat Superman. Like Avengers also started out really strong with the Avengers Day mission and other linear levels but then later also forced us to do more uninspired missions to see the next cutscene and I really hope that Suicide Squad does not fall in the same trap. We once again have to wait and see but I think the story and the set pieces can be the saving grace here that it will be worth it to pick it up to just go through that main campaign. Maybe not for full price, but later down the line. Although again, that really depends on if they keep the amount of cutscenes up throughout the whole game. Like, then I don't mind having to rescue hostages or defend a point a few times from the same purple enemies. But I overall want more from this game myself. Like, I really hope that the full release captures me and also makes me care for the loot grind that I normally have a weakness for. Because I think it could be really fun to have this game be successful and get cool reasons post-launch to return to these characters and see what other stuff they get into. Not to mention the new characters that will also be released after launch. I just thought of this but every live service I can think of takes itself super seriously. So the lighter tone here where we don't know what these unhinged characters will say or do could totally be that fresh wind that at least would make me care more for this game. It's what made the Peacemaker TV show and again James Gunn's Suicide Squad fantastic and so far they do seem to capture that feeling. So let's hope that everything else in terms of gameplay comes together when the game comes out as well. I'll totally be playing the full release, stream it, make spoiler free tips and tricks, so totally subscribe if you haven't already for more content on Suicide Squad. A like would really help me out to check out our recent in-depth video going over brand new details that you maybe don't know about by clicking on the screen and I will speak to you very soon. Goodbye.